they played some nice football, we could still hardly win games. I mean, when nothing changes, then you've got to make a change. Uh, we take a look at the stats here. But he had more points per game uh, during his reign than Guadalim, but you take a look at it, it was the goals against, wasn't it? Almost well, 2.7. Um, just um, too much. But, Chuck, what about those that are saying, yeah, but he deserved to get the transfer window to put his own mark on this squad? No, well, here's the thing, and it's that goals per game, goals conceded per game, for me, that is the final nail in his coffin. If you are in a relegation dogfight, you've got to sort your defence out. It's gotten worse under Bob Bradley. And now, do you trust him with the transfer window to bring players in, even though he hasn't been able to make this team better defensively? M my argument is, get somebody in who can make this team better defensively and give them the transfer window. You don't want that person who is better at organising inheriting somebody else's players. Not when you have this easier choice right in front of you. We, we always say that it's, it's a results-based business. Mm -hmm. But when you're bottom of the league and you take over a team that's bottom of the league, it's going to take you time to change that. So then it becomes a case of, well, how badly do you lose? You know, if you're losing 1-0 yep. and you're unlucky and you're down to 10 men... And who are the opposition and it's an own as well. goal and all that stuff, then if I'm an owner, I can, I can see that maybe something might change. But as Craig said, when you're getting pasted four and five regularly, when you, can, it's when not you, you have to go. I think, you know, when you look at it, I mean, some of the performances, the one at Tottenham, my God, I mean, the statistics in that game, I'm not big into stats, but they were an absolute shocker. His home game against Man United, I don't think I've seen a, a more abject performance than that in a long, long time, just sitting off letting things happen. The deal is, we owners, and I think a lot of people, certainly in America, don't understand that the relegation scenario is could be oblivion. It has been for certain clubs. We're talking millions and millions of pounds, and we're talking about a player roster and squad that you still have to pay the big money. And then those players might go, and who knows where the end is. But I go back to my original point. You have to show your owners that you somewhat, as Stevie's saying, in close games, you can somewhat organise a team to give yourself half a chance of getting a result where you can say, if I go and get that player or that player, I can make this better. But when you're getting pasted by the West Ham's who've struggled and the Middlesbrough's and teams like this, at home, some of those games, how can you go to those owners, American or not, and say, give me 35, 40 million in the transfer window and I'll make it right? Because they'll say, what are we seeing on the field here? We're seeing somebody who clearly, at this level, is out his depth. But a lot of people are pointing to the fact that this squad is rotten. That you get, yeah, rid, you, you get rid of Ashley Williams, you get rid of a leader on the pitch, and then that's it. Co coaching, listen, uh, uh, anybody who's, who's coaching in the Premier League or anywhere around the world in a decent league knows the X's and O's of the game. But it's those little nuances that a Sam Allardyce or a Tony Pulis has where he makes bad players believe they can actually do a job. Because all the obvious ones he had to do for the rest of the season was do a job. Just make sure you don't get relegated. Doesn't mean you have to play like Brazil. Doesn't mean you have to be Uruguay and, and knock people out every five seconds of a game. What it means is you have to be able to fight and you have to be organised and your first priority is not lose a goal. And when you look at the goal stats from when Bob went there, mm. they've lost more. That tells you that all the guys that have been successful over the years at keeping teams up have gone one way, Bob tried to do it another way, and guess what? It didn't work. Let's bring Gab Marcotting into this conversation, shall we? Gab, what's your big takeaway from what you heard the boys discuss over the opening few minutes? All right, a couple of things here. First and foremost, this idea of whether uh, somebody deserves to be sacked or not is completely irrelevant and stupid and shouldn't come up. You don't get sacked because you deserve it. You get sacked because the team thinks that you're better off, that they're better off without you. Um, in this situation, I think Bob was uh, very much a victim of some bad things that happened before him, like the fact that the sentiment was against him from day one, in part because the owners, uh, Levine and Kaplan, but also Jenkins, decided to appoint him without consulting the Swansea Supporters Trust, or shareholders in the club. Uh, and <clears throat> the other big thing is, we can sit here and talk about points and comparisons. Can we talk about results? Can we talk about results, please, Gab? Can we talk about results and not no, 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 because and not Swansea results trust, are and secondary. not Americanisms and not foreigners? Can we just talk about results? 
Please, please, no, please. But, because it's uh, a results-driven business. It's not, Craig. Oh, Craig, I'm, it's not. That's one of the biggest lies oh, come on. in the world. And I'll, and I'll explain to you why if you give me a second. If you give me a second, I'll explain to you why. The fact that the, 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 the fans, the, the fans, the Swansea fans, were put against him the, from the start. What's that got to team, do with results? And in... What has that it has got to, to do to... with the results. No, this got nothing to do Can with Can I explain, results. Craig? Craig, Craig, oh, I'll so. explain it to you. Tomorrow, here in England, you're going to be waking up to news... Or I will be. Uh, you'll probably stay up all night. Um, yeah. You'll be waking up to stories about how Bob Bradley had lost the dressing room. Now, I know how the media works. I've been doing this a long time. Those stories... Where are out there because somebody today, and there are people who do this for a living, uh, put the word out to the newspapers that the dressing room was against them. A portion of the fans oh. were already against them in the last game, oh. and and were singing. They were singing that they wanted Bradley out. Oh. A lot of this, a lot of this is going to impact the way the owners see the club and the way they see Bradley's ability to continue doing his job. I think these facts are frankly undeniable. Beyond this. Was he, was he terrible in certain games? I agree with you. That United game where he played Baston and Fernando Llorente up front and Sigurdsson on the wing, I'm thinking to myself, what, is he joking? Uh, you know, I, I, there were some horrendous performances, and that all played into it. But once the faith goes from the fans and apparently the players as well... How did, how did Tony no Pulis get on that? No, I tell you what. How, did, how did Tony Pulis get on at Palace when he went there? The he went through the door, all the Palace was going, oh, my God, here we go, Tony Pulis. What we've done to deserve this. Well, yeah, because, but he so started he was winning in the same games. boat, right? He started winning games. No, yeah, yeah, why exactly. did he start winning no, games? He started winning Here's games. Here's my point. My point is, all the things you've just spoken about, Tony Pulis walked into the exact same thing. But guess what he did? He got things on the... He got them, the players, the supporters, and everybody involved, he got them on, the, on his side. That's part of the job. When you walk into a team, they can't win well, a game, right. no, no, can't I defend, Listen, you have not... to turn it round. No. I, it doesn't matter how you do it. I'm not doubting any of that. But what I'm saying is, but what, what I'm saying is, 11 games is not a time in which to judge a manager. Nowhere in the world. But in this specific case, it was made worse by some of the stupid decisions the owners made in the way they approached this, in the way they appointed him, and then he made things worse with some inane decisions on the pitch. He certainly did himself no favors there. I agree with you. Uh, he, he could have turned it around if he would gotten better results. He hadn't. What bugs me is this blaming of the squad, uh, and, and I agree with what Craig said. You know, uh, there are other teams that have squads that are just as bad. And might I point out... That OK, we've got, got to move on, Gab, because I've got to talk about... I've got to talk about over. I've got to move on, Gab, because we've got to talk about where Swansea are on the table, obviously. No, but let me explain. So, second we, know, but, we know where Swansea are on the table. They're, they're second bottom. I mean, that, that's... I mean, we need to see a table to, to, to know they're down the bottom. Let me explain something. Let, let's just clear something up here, right? I know British, English managers who've lost dressing rooms, right? I know foreign managers who've lost dressing rooms. It happens. Let me clear something up. Some media-driven agenda about Bob's Americanisms or whatever isn't going to lose a dressing room. Let me tell you. Players might be stupid. They're not that stupid. If Bob Bradley or any other manager goes in and takes training sessions and picks teams, you'll earn that respect from players. They don't care what's said in the newspaper. Right? Don't care. It doesn't even factor into it. You get that respect on the training ground and by your team selection and by your results. Yes, the Swansea fans were not happy with the appointment and yes, the board went about it in a way that certain people were not happy. But you don't lose a dressing room because of the back pages of a tabloid newspaper. You lose the dressing room after three, four, five, six weeks when players can see in the training field things are not happening and the team selection is not right and the results are rotten not right. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with the back pages of new newspapers. I've been in dressing rooms, I've seen it, managers with respect, managers with, without respect. It comes from your day in, day out, workload on the training ground and at the stadium on a Saturday. Take a look at the bookies. They've got Ryan Giggs, who apparently a lot of the fans wanted initially oh. as the favourite to take over. Alan Pardew, of course, just sacked at Palace, available. Chris Coleman at sixes, Roy Hodgson eight. Uh, Jürgen Klinsmann. <laughs> uh, uh, 20 to 1, um, Stevie. I, I'm sorry. I, what has Ryan Giggs ever done in his coaching career that would prepare him for a dogfight? Absolutely nothing. You need a guy who's been in the trenches. You need a guy who's oblivious to all the other nonsense out with the club and who will go in there and get his hands dirty 
and get the players on his side and then the fans on his side and then the board and then they'll start climbing the table. Ryan Giggs has no clue about any of that well, what whatsoever. What the hell is Alan Pardew doing on that list <laughs> at number two? I think he put what himself on it. What the hell is he doing on that list? He was an utter <laughs> shambles in the end at Crystal Palace. You and why would Chris Coleman leave Wales to go and manage this at the moment? Yeah. I mean, I know, I know they might not get to another semi-final, and that was great. But honestly, they, they've got themselves in a right pickle here. Swansea, uh, Swansea need, Swansea need a, a good man manager and somebody who knows a relegation dogfight. And, and to Steve's point, not only has Ryan Giggs done nothing in his managerial career to say he's ready for a relegation dogfight, neither in his playing career, let's be honest. He's, he's never spent any time in, in that half of the table. Now, the, the other names, same problems as, as, as Craig's point out, Pardew, defensively awful at, at, at Crystal Palace. Who then, Chad? Harry Redknapp. Ah, oh, your boy. Best man manager to get this team back clear. Remember what he did with Spurs under Wally Ramos?